and welcome back to my channel. It's Karen here. Today, I will talk about taxis in China. Taking a taxi is a quick and convenient way to get to your destination. You can find taxis in almost every city and the fares are relatively inexpensive compared to those in western cities. Though each time when I took a taxi and when I told my mom I took a taxi, she was like, Why are you taking a taxi? Are you rich? In Cantonese. And I'm like, I can't help it when it's late at night and it's so convenient. You know, the safety first, y'all. Yeah? Anywho, in this video, you'll learn how to hail and pay for a modern and a traditional taxi. So let's get started! And the modern way is using the mobile app DD Xing. It is the Chinese Uber slash Lyft. In other words, it's basically hailing a taxi on your phone. What? The layout of the app is very similar to Uber. You can type in destination and select whatever size car you want. Once the system matches you up with the driver, you'll be informed of the driver's contact info, online rating, car make, and the likes. Just like Uber, right? Two, lucky for you because the app is available in English. So you can use your foreign credit cards to pay, which also means you don't have to carry cash around with you. Although you can write your destination in English, the app works best if you're able to input Chinese characters as your destination. Three, also keep in mind that the drivers here don't speak English. And if you don't look or sound Chinese, they'll probably ask you where you're from and other basic questions. It's a friendly conversation, nothing like an exam, and a perfect way to practice your Chinese. 4. They're the same price as traditionally hailing a taxi. You get an idea of how much to pay when you order on the app. And that's it! That's all you need to know about the modern taxi. Now let's move on to the traditional taxi because that's a little bit more complicated. The traditional taxi means hailing the cab the old-fashioned way. These taxis are usually red, yellow, and green. Don't take the black ones because those are illegal taxis. They are private cars unlicensed to do transportation business. AKA, the black cars are usually just Chinese people who are unemployed or just driving back home. If you do happen to flag them down, make sure you tell them where you want to go and also negotiate the price before you get on or else you're just going to be asking trouble for yourself. If you call a taxi through DD Chuxing and the car is black, do not worry, those are not the black cabs that we're talking about here. The ones that you get from GD are legal and safe. Now you know which taxi to get on, let's move on to hailing one. It's as simple as looking for a taxi and hailing one. Wrong, wrong, wrong. There's actually more to this. What? There's a flag behind the windshield that shines bright when the taxi is empty and goes dark when there is a passenger. So look for the green ones that say home chu. Those are your targets. Two, sometimes when you wave at an empty taxi, the taxi driver will still drive past you and ignore you. Don't worry, it's nothing against you. They're probably just reserved, going on a lunch break, or they desperately need to go to the restroom. Three, taxis cannot stop just anywhere. They cannot stop during a busy street with traffic police, during intersections, ring roads, or near a freeway. So instead, look for a taxi near the taxi standing zone or during a side road to increase your chances of finding a taxi. Okay, perfect! Now you're inside the taxi. What should you do now? One. Before you get on a taxi, enter from the passenger side. The driver's side is sometimes locked. Two, are you talented? Because it's show and tell time. And it is now your turn to perform your act. Either tell the driver in Chinese where you want to go or write it down in Chinese where you want to go. Don't try to use pinyin because that's cheating and frankly, they probably don't know any pinyin. It's time to step up your game, brother. It's time to practice those Chinese characters. If you have a printed map of the location, that would be great too. Let's hope that is written in Chinese characters and not pinyin or in English, or else the driver will probably have trouble navigating through that map. 3. Make sure they turn the meter on, or else they will scam you and ask you to pay a large sum at the end of the ride. The meter sounds like 
you'll definitely hear it and it will last like 10 seconds so make sure to watch out for that sound four the driver will probably ask you some simple questions like where you're from if your chinese can handle it you might be able to even find out some local specialties where the best spots to hang out and be able to exchange cultures so get your head in the Chinese game, all right? I mean, that is if you want to know all the secrets. One, once you arrive at your destination, make sure to pay the driver in either in cash or mobile payments through WeChat and Alipay. If you're paying cash, make sure to pay in smaller bills. If you paid with big bills, make sure to count your change because I hear that some drivers might give you the wrong change. I hope that you have studied the currency system in China so you don't get scammed. But if you have no idea what Chinese money looks like, here's a 10 second lecture. On the other hand, if you're paying using Alipay or WeChat Pay, just scan the QR code, which is usually right in front of you so you will not be able to miss it. The starting price, aka within three kilometers, it's between seven to 13 RMB. Seven for smaller cities and 13 for big cities like Beijing and Shanghai. This rise is about two to three RMB per kilometer. And if you don't know what this means, this is about one to 1.5 RMB per minute during regular hours. For example, a 40 minute ride would be about 60 RMB. Of course, this price is slightly more expensive during traffic hours, rush hours, and during the night. One, two, two. No matter how generous, cute, friendly, rude the driver is, do not tip him. It is not a custom here in China. A polite thank you very much and a dazzling smile would do just fine. Three, check that you have all your belongings with you before you leave or else you'll never find it back again. Unless four, you've asked for and kept the receipt. The receipt has the taxi driver's ID and phone number on it, so you can always call the taxi driver for a nice chit chat about Chinese politics. Just kidding, never do that. Only use the number if you've actually left your belongings in the car. Don't abuse this number. Phew, phew, phew. That was a lot. That was a lot of information. If you want to know more about how other modes of transportation work in China, I'll link those down below. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and give this video some love by hitting that thumbs up. Also, last but not least, don't be shy and comment down below how your day has been. Alright, until next time, bye bye!